Hey guys, it's Archon, and this is an exciting day for anyone looking forward to Reaper of Souls. Once again, Diablo fans has data mined a new patch on the PTR, the Public Test Realm for Diablo. Now, for anyone who's not familiar with data mined information, this is where Blizzard puts a build of an upcoming game or expansion onto the Public Test Realm to do some testing, and then someone like Diablo fans goes and scrapes a bunch of information off of the build, a bunch of strings. So this information isn't final. It's by no means descriptive of what we're going to see in Reaper of Souls. It's just what they're playing around with right now. They're just doing some testing, playing with some ideas. All of this is subject to change, and almost definitely at least some of it will change. However, it's still exciting to go through and see what they're working with, what might make it into the game, and what they're testing. So I'm just going to start at the top. I'm going to go through all the stuff that I found really exciting, give you guys my opinion on it, and I'll have a link below in the description in case you want to read it for yourself. There is quite a bit of it, so I'm just kind of cherry picking the stuff that I found really exciting. So the first thing they talk about is new gem types. The new gem types are going to be called Imperial, Flawless Imperial, Royal, and Flawless Royal. And as you can also see from this image at the very top row, that's a redrawn Marquise gem. And I think it looks pretty cool. I have to say, I think it looks a bit cooler than the current Marquise gem. Um, although I think the, uh, the Marquise gem actually looks a little bit cooler than the Imperial or Royal gems. Anyways, that's just me. But you can see the very right column, that's actually the diamond diamonds the new gem coming into the game we also got some images of some of the gear uh, we don't know they say it's normal gear on Diablo fans I guess that means it's just gonna be like baseline gear but it looks pretty cool I'd say it looks a step above uh, some of our current gear we got some pictures uh, probably the most exciting picture we got was Chaldeum at night we learned that in Nephilim rifts the the weather will be randomized in each zone so for example Chaldeum normally only seen in the day can now be seen at night. I think that's a pretty cool picture there. And we got some other pictures as well such as a map of Act 5. It looks like it's the map where you're going to choose which waypoint to go to. After that we got my favorite part of any data mine information which is the new legendary passive. So some of these are just changed from previous versions but there's a huge list as always of I don't know maybe 50 to 100 new legendary passives. Effects are going to go on brand new legendaries. They're very powerful compared to the effects we have on current legendaries. And I just wanted to go through a few of them that I thought were really exciting. The first one I thought was exciting was Crusader's Blessed Shield bounces to three additional enemies. I already thought this was like a Captain America move with the shield. Now that it's bouncing across all the enemies, even more Captain America-like. Uh, you tell me, though. Also, casting Consecration causes a smaller Consecration to also be cast beneath all of your allies. I just thought that was pretty cool. Just a cool effect and a little bit of a bonus for uh, playing in a group. Uh, companion calls all companion types to your side. I thought that'd be pretty cool as a demon hunter to just be like, companions, and all of them just come running to your side. It doesn't say how long they last, but that was, uh, that was pretty cool. If they last forever, that'd just be awesome. You're just uh, like a pet demon hunter. That could be really cool. Um, you're immune to desecrator, molten, and plagued monster types. That one sounds pretty OP. I don't know how I feel about it, uh, that you're just going to be ignoring those affixes now, but definitely a powerful legendary. Uh, how about this one? When you die, a meteor falls from the sky and revives you, and it has a five-minute cooldown. So a lot of people are complaining that they don't get a spirit vessel or something to bring them back to life as like a demon hunter. Well, now maybe, uh, depending on what item this rolls on, anyone could have it. Anyone could come back to life every five minutes. Uh, you're surrounded by deadly poison cloud. If you miss Necromancer from D2, just killing everything around you, well, maybe now you can do it in D3. They don't say how powerful the poison cloud is, but I thought that was pretty cool just walking around doing damage to everyone that's near you. Um, this one is cool for Meteor Wizards. Lesser enemies are now lured into your Meteor Impact areas. So as Wizards know, it sucks to try to hit enemies with your Meteor unless your critical mass, which they're probably getting rid of. Um, but now, little enemies will just run right to your Meteor, which is nice of them. This one seemed really cool. It would just be a lot of fun. When you kill a Fallen, you have a 10% chance to charm all other nearby Fallen. 
That would just be awesome. It would make you want to farm Fallen all the time. They actually have a lot of affixes that are specific to one type of enemy or one type of damage from an enemy. I don't know how I feel about those because it seems like it would require you to just keep the legendary in your bag and then swap it out when you're fighting those kind of enemies, which to me sounds kind of tedious, but it is cool to be able to specialize in one enemy type. Like, hold on, guys. I got this. I got my undead axe. They also had a lot of legendary passives that would just change how you played your character. For example, every time you're hit by a projectile, automatically shoot a homing rocket for 500% weapon damage at the attacker. So if you had that, it seems likely you might just want to get hit by projectiles. Maybe you would spec really tanky, and then you just run into projectiles, shooting rockets everywhere. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Um, also, they have a lot of passives that make certain damage types more effective or using a lot of different damage types more effective. So this one, damaging enemies with arcane, cold, fire, or lightning will cause a meteor of the same damage type to fall from the sky, and there's a 15 second cooldown for each damage type. So the cooldown's separate for each damage type. So you could, you could damage with arcane, and then an arcane meteor comes down, and then go cold, and a cold meteor comes down. So it really would encourage you to use a bunch of different spells, which is interesting, because we've already seen a lot of things that cause you to use one spell type. The wizard, I think, is really just getting a lot of really cool stuff. No Pharisees. Wizard's getting all the best stuff. I don't mind. I'm a wizard. But also, enemies killed by fire damage explode and set nearby enemies on fire, dealing 300% weapon damage over 5 seconds. So that's an example of one that would make you use one type of element. And it seems like they're doing a lot with fire damage to make enemies burn over time. There's lots of passives and skills uh, that cause fire damage and cause them to burn. So I'm wondering if weapons with fire damage on them will also cause enemies to burn. They did say that weapons with elemental types will all have different effects. It seems like that's what it's going to be for fire. Also, there's a 25% chance for enemies killed by frost damage to release a frost nova. I really want to play a Frost Wizard, so I think that would be really cool if every time you kill an enemy, 25% chance, Frost Nova everywhere. Um, there was two here that sounded really powerful, but I don't know how I feel about them. Doubles the chance to find a Demonic Essence, and then another one, Picking Up Gold Grants Experience. And I don't know how I feel about those. Those would be really nice for farming, but would they feel mandatory? Like, if you found one of those legendaries, how could you not use it? doubles your chance of finding a demonic essence like if that item sucks you're still going to use it right it says demonic essence uh i was under the impression that they were going to go to a new essence um maybe that's just a level 60 item i don't know i don't know maybe it's a chance to save your demonic essences uh i wouldn't i wouldn't count on it i don't think i'm going to save mine but that is interesting um also this one was just kind of funny 100 percent chance to cluck when attacking some chicken based item. It seems like that'd be really funny at first and really annoying later on. But maybe if it's not like a top tier item, you would just have it in your inventory to mess with people and have fun with it. So that was just a small sample of the legendary passives I found most exciting. If you want to read through the whole list, and it's pretty good, you can use the link below in the description. After that, they have some strings regarding difficulty. Now, they don't tell us which difficulty is which. It just says difficulty selector description 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But I think we can figure it out using the information provided. For example, down here it says difficulty 3 locked. This difficulty is locked until you get at least one hero to level 60. They've already told us that Master is supposed to be locked until level 60, so maybe difficulty 3 is Master, which would be difficulty description 3 here. If that's true, I'm really happy, because I was worried that Hard and Expert wouldn't give bonuses, like on console, which would kind of suck, because then you'd only play on normal. But it looks like they are going to give bonuses. Assuming difficulty selector 1 is Hard, it gives a 75% XP and Gold bonus, and then Expert would give 100%, Master 200%, and Torment 300%. And they also added some really exciting bonuses on top of XP and gold. For example, at what I assume is expert, bounties award double currency, which is pretty cool. And then at masters, bounties award double currency and new legendary recipes can drop in this difficulty. And this would make sense if it's master that you would start getting new legendary recipes at level 60, which I think is pretty cool that there's brand new recipes once you get to that difficulty. And then starting at torment, you get new recipes and new legendaries. 
And that's really cool, and it also explains why maybe they don't want you to unlock Torment until level 70. If these new legendaries are only for Reaper of Souls, they wouldn't want you to have them unless you bought the expansion and got to level 70, and so it makes sense that difficulty description 4 would be Torment. You also get a 250 bonus legendary drop rate and additional gold XP legendary drops per slider tick. And I imagine slider tick would be Torment 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then it says description 5... I don't know what that means. Maybe that's Torment level 5. Legendary drop rates are doubled. So it looks like the bonuses you get for going up difficulties are a lot bigger than they are currently in the game, which means there's probably going to be a very big jump in difficulty from one difficulty to the next, which I kind of like, the, a bigger range from the easiest to the hardest. They said Torment might be similar to MP10, so Torment 5 could be much harder than MP10 is now. We'll just have to wait and see, but it looks like they really might want you to make a big level of progression from right when you hit 70 until you're on the highest difficulty. I think that's a pretty cool idea. Right below that they have what looks to be collector's edition items. I imagine that's what CE stands for. They have Tyrael Helm, Malthael Helm, Ceremonial Dagger, some other stuff. I think that's pretty cool that you could get Tyrael's Helm or Malthael's Helm. It'd be even cooler if it was an actual drop in the game, I think. It looks like it's probably just going to be uh, vanity since it's collector's edition, but maybe not. Maybe CE stands for something else, speculate away. Also, a quick note here, they haven't officially announced that ladders will be in the game, but they do have a few strings about ladders. So it looks like they're at least still planning on having ladders in the game. I've said it before, I would be surprised if they didn't have ladders, but a lot of us were surprised that they didn't announce it at BlizzCon. So we'll have to wait and see, but it looks like they're planning on having it in. Underneath that, this might be the thing I'm most excited about from the data mined information. They have a section called Hero Details, which appears to be additional stats on your character sheet, such as Wrath Cost Reduction, Fury Cost Reduction, Hatred Cost Reduction, but what they also have is Splash Damage on Hit which looks like it could be a new affix on items. As it says, can be increased by items. They haven't announced splash damage yet, but I think this would be an awesome affix. They're trying to find new affixes that would be appealing to players, as appealing as crit chance, crit damage, attack speed, so you don't just have those three main stats you're going for. There's some more exciting options, and you actually have to choose which ones you want. Splash damage would be so cool. Can you imagine building a build around splash damage? Or having to choose between crit chance and splash damage? That's a hard choice, right? So, they haven't announced it yet. Again, we don't know if any of this is going into the game, but I think it's really exciting that they're playing around with that idea. It says, attacks have a blank chance to deal blank damage to enemies within blank yards. So I don't know if you can improve all those things or if splash damage just improves all three of those, but uh, I love the idea of splash damage as an affix on items. And then directly under that, there's what appears to be another new affix called Crushing Blow. Or crushing blow chance. However, it's the only affix on this list that doesn't say can be increased by items. Crushing blow also shows up on some of the new class abilities or altered class abilities, so it looks like it's going to be another affix. The question is, is it going to show up on items or not, and what does it do? I also found this section pretty intriguing. Underneath the vendor section, there's uh, some tags called bounty gamble, roll for fabulous prizes, uh, and slot machine page blood shard and then it looks like you can trade blood shards for items so we don't know exactly what this is but it looks like you might be able to gamble with the rewards you get from bounties to get items that would be my guess but I'd love to hear your guys' speculation as well what do you think this is gonna be we've heard a little bit about gambling in Reaper of Souls and I think a lot of us have been hoping for that kind of nostalgic back to D2 days it looks like they might be adding it in mixing it up with bounties and this would just be another gold sink and I think it'd be a pretty good gold sink if it was something you could do over and over again. Really, I think the goal with gold sinks is to make it so you always have something to spend gold on. If you always have something to do with your gold, then gold will never lose value completely, and uh, that's definitely their goal in Reaper of Souls. After that, they have a huge amount of class changes. However, most of them are just little tweaks to numbers and rewording of the skills. Uh, there was only a few that I found really exciting. Uh, for example, the monk spell, Dashing Strike, looks like it's going to have charges, which means you could use it multiple times before the cooldown starts going and getting the charges back. It'll have two charges, and then there's a rune that makes it have three charges. And then Mystic Ally, it looks like you only have 
to cast it once, and if it dies, it just comes back in five seconds. A little convenience thing, but they also made a lot of changes to the runes on Mystic Ally. Again, a lot of small changes. Read through it if you want to. It's just, it's mostly boring stuff. However, on the wizard, we kind of saw this coming, but it looks like Critical Mass is dead. Again, this is just the test realm. All of this is subject to change, but I think most of us kind of assumed they're going to have to get rid of Critical Mass, and the passive right now is just disabled. It looks like they haven't decided what they're doing with it yet, if they're going to change it or replace it, but on the PTR, it looks like it's doing nothing. And then the Crusader had a lot of changes, um, but it's hard to compare the Crusader changes because we don't have a Crusader right now. And so uh, if you want to read those, again, go through the link, uh, but I'm not going to go through all of those. There's just a few more strings that I found really exciting. In the Errors section, there's something here called Corrupted Global Chest Error. This chest is sealed by corruption. It can't be opened until the corruption is cleansed speculate away. I'm not sure what that's going to be, but uh seems like it could be something cool. And then also in game options, there's an option to automatically skip all cutscenes, something that a lot of us wanted. So, cool little option there. Overall, I would say this is one of the more exciting batches of data mined information. I think that splash damage effects on items could be really cool. Cross my fingers that it stays in there. Uh, the legendary passive list was really awesome. Again, read through that if you want to read all of them. They're really cool. Overall, just getting me more excited for Reaper of Souls. I really think this is going to bring Diablo to where it needs to be. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that subscribe button, and I'll have another one for you soon.